Hi guys, okay, so I'm going to now do the topic on blood. So again, from B2, uh, additional signs. Okay, so blood is, uh, as we know, a liquid that runs through our veins and our arteries and goes around our body, but it's also an organ and it has many different specialized cells. And these all came from uh, stem cells when we were born and these stem cells differentiated, which means they changed their job, their function and turned into all the different cells that are in the blood. But each human has about five liters of blood. Okay. Okay, now the blood is made up of a few different parts, that's four. That's the plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and the platelets. So the plasma is a yellow liquid, and its job is to transport, let's carry all the different substances that are dissolved in it around the body. So it carries the carbon dioxide, it carries enzymes, it carries digested food around your body from where it's collected to where it needs it. It also carries the other three parts of the blood, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets as well. So that's the plasma. Okay, so now for red blood cells. Red blood cells contain a red, red pigment known as haemoglobin. And haemoglobin can combine with oxygen to make something called oxyhemoglobin. Now what red blood cells do is when they're in the lungs, they combine bind their haemoglobin with oxygen to make the oxyhemoglobin. They then transport this oxyhemoglobin in themselves around the body in the blood to the rest of the body's tissues. And there they release the oxygen so that the rest of the body cells can use the oxygen for aerobic respiration to get the energy that they need. Okay, so red blood cells have a biconcave shape. And what this means is that they are a circle with a kind of a dimple and a depression in each side of the circle. And what this allows them to have is a very large surface area to volume ratio. And this means that they can absorb as much oxygen as they possibly can and carry as much oxygen as they possibly can combined with their haemoglobin to make oxyhemoglobin. So they carry all this oxygen around the body to the body's tissues and cells where it needs it to do the aerobic respiration. Okay, now the other final feature which is very special about red blood cells is that they have no nucleus. They are one of the only cells in the body with no nucleus in fact and again the reason for this is so that they can again carry as much oxygen as they possibly can to get it around the body to all the body cells so they can do their respiration. Okay, so white blood cells. Now, white blood cells are part of the body's defence mechanism against disease. Some white blood cells produce antibodies. Now, antibodies are proteins and they bind to the pathogens, the tiny little creatures such as bacteria, fungi and viruses that produce disease, make disease, and they destroy these pathogens. Other white blood cells, they engulf the pathogens and foreign cells as well. Any foreign cells that enter the body themselves and destroy them that way. And all white blood cells have a nucleus, like most cells in the body. Okay, so platelets. The platelets are tiny little fragments of cells. So that means they're broken pieces of cells. So again, they don't have a nucleus either because they're not whole cells. Okay, now platelets are very important for forming scabs and blood clots. So if you break your blood vessels and your uh, veins, arteries, then a clot will be formed by the platelets. And obviously that's really important in stopping the blood from gushing out of your veins and arteries but it's also important because once that blood clot dries up and the water all evaporates from it, it obviously becomes a scab and that stops microorganisms. So the tiny little things that create disease, bacteria, viruses and fungi from getting inside you again and causing disease.